There are TV shows that you can sit around and enjoy as a family. And then there's Bridgerton, which I so happened to watch with my mother. Yeah, nobody warned me. Dan it, Dan it, Dan it, Dan it, Dan it, Dan it, Dan it. I like that. It's gonna be my theme song. This show caused quite a buzz on social media and broke streaming records. Over 82 million households tuned in in the first month. I was mainly interested because of Shonda Rhimes. You got Grey's Anatomy that I've <laughs> never actually watched. Scandal, How to Get Away, Princess Diaries 2, some pretty heavy hitters. So, Bridgerton has to be good, right? Well, let me set the scene. Bridgerton is a show about a group of people trying to make a come up by any means necessary. Lies, backstabbing, forced pregnancies, I mean, there's no limit to what these despicable people would do. With all of that going on, you wanna know what the kicker is? This show is incredibly boring. I mean, every episode was the same. Slow pace. I need to find a man. I need to find a man. I need to find a man. I don't want a man. I'm an independent woman. Step and repeat. Step and repeat. Step and repeat. So why was this so popular? Well, I can tell you one reason many kept watching. Myself included. The Duke of Hastings. I mean, just look at the material. Swoons heard across the world when he stepped onto the scene. A bit smug, but You'd be smug too had you had a bunch of gold digging hussies squawking and squilling at you 24-7. He was the rebel royal. Not interested in the glitz and glam and definitely not interested in his fake fiance, Daphne. I mean, would you be interested in her? First of all, look at her hair. What is this? By now, you guys know I hate a bad wig. And if you're new, then I'm telling you now. I hate a bad wig. Look at these bangs. Not the bang. Now, if you were not a part of the 82 million plus, let me explain why I called her his fake fiance. The Duke and Daphne in the very beginning make a deal. You see, he doesn't wish to be married. He's very much about the bachelor life. No kids, no woman, no worries, right? Then you have Miss Bang Yang, who wishes to be married, but to the right guy. Not the losers her brother has been trying to ship her off with. Ideally, being seen with the Duke means more suitable suitors. Suitable suitors? Better suited suitors. Suitable... No. Better... Mm. You know what, forget it. Y'all know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> the ones she has interest in will approach her because who doesn't want something someone already has. As for the Duke, if he appears to be taken, then the women will respect him and let him live his blissful life he is destined to have. The only problem is, there's only but so long the charade will last. I'll elaborate on that in a second. In the meantime, we have Daphne's sister Eloise, an obvious fan favorite for the sole purpose that she is the complete opposite of Daphne. She doesn't care about boys, she cares about books, which is a typical trope, but I mean, with this show, we needed something. She spends the majority of her days on a wild goose hunt trying to track down Lady Whistledown, the Daily Mail intern who's been spilling the tea all around town. I'm like, how can she possibly know what everybody got going on in their lives? But I guess if you ain't got nothing going on, you can't help but to be consumed by everybody else. Which brings me to Penelope Featherington, who ain't got nothing going on, so she can't help but be consumed by everybody else. But to be fair, she's one of those unlucky in love girls. And living in a world where marriage and children are a woman's top priority, being unlucky in that department may give you a little extra time on your hands to indulge in other things, including backstabbing your cousin. Which brings me to Marina. Now, her story piqued my interest a bit. First of all, she traveled a ways to live with her distant family, and one of the first things we see is that she's mixed and her family members are white, and they all were quite surprised. So it's like, yeah, these people clearly don't see each other often, because why y'all so shy? But the real story is Marina been giving up the cookies, unwed with the baby on the way. Such a disgrace. Her cousin-in-law came up with this elaborate plan to trap a man so dishonor wouldn't be bestowed upon the family. By any means necessary, she was shoving anybody down her throat. If I was Marina, I would have ran away because 
you got me messed up. I ain't that desperate. Single motherhood is fine by me. But Marina had her eyes set on one of the Bridgerton boys, the one that Penelope was crushing on. And on one hand, I felt for her like, I finally found someone that I like that shows interest and here you come. But on the other hand, I'm like, you should have shut that down as soon as you saw it happening. Like, nah, that's my boo. And he's off limits. Go trap somebody else. But she let it go on and thus, heartbreak was her fate. The best story of the series and makes it a little bit worth the watching is definitely The Dukes. It had the most layers. Mom dies in child labor and he's stuck with his abusive father who doesn't love him or care about him. The only reason he had a child was for the vanity that came with having an heir to the throne. But because he wasn't enough in his eyes, he treated him less than, ignored him as if he didn't exist. Luckily for the Duke, he had, um, crap, what was her name? Lady... You know, I'm just calling her Auntie because she gave Auntie vibes. So, Auntie was pretty much his saving grace. Took him under her wing and basically raised him, which is precisely why she was keeping a close eye on him when he said he was courting that Bridgerton girl. She was here for it at first, but she was like, hold up. This looking a little sus. Lady Whistledown even wrote about it like, you ain't slick, Daphne. So when I say the charade can only last but for so long, I mean, I don't really think they thought it through, you know, all the possible outcomes. And how long did they think they can go before someone caught on? They get caught making out in the garden and Anthony challenges Simon, or the Duke, AKA the Duke. <laughs> to a duel to defend his sister's honor. But because somebody saw them, Daphne pleads with the Duke to marry her so that she won't be tossed to the wayside and exiled from society. Simon was like, what well, that's too damn bad. <laughs> well, he didn't say that exactly, but he wanted to. Instead, he just agreed. But here's the kicker for me. Because up until this point, they've been giving work friends chemistry at best. Like, you know those people that you're cool with at your job and then when you clock out, that's it? They ask you for your Instagram and you're like, oh no, nah, I don't have social media. Knowing good and well, you be on there all day. It was given that. So when they try to convince us that they've fallen hopelessly in love during this fake courtship, I'm like, girl gone. The bangs were distracting me, so maybe I missed it. But anyway, they get married and that's where I just can't with the show anymore. On one hand, I was feeling a little bad for Daphne. She wanted kids. He didn't because he promised his dad on his deathbed that everything he wanted would die with him. That Duke of Hastings bloodline would be finito. And I don't care what nobody say, I was rocking with him on that decision. Yes, it's spiteful. No, he has not healed, but so what? These are necessary measures. Because F his daddy, that's why. But Daphne? Nah, I can't rock with her. And to be real, it was disappointing to see her character go the route she did and the producers didn't think anything of it. Hopefully we won't be seeing much of her next season as the story follows her brother Anthony. But honestly, Anthony didn't really give me much to be interested in this season, so we'll see how next season goes. The online chatter was kind of mixed about that, but so many people were up in arms about the historical aspects of this show. The clothes don't match the time. Speaking of clothes, be sure to stop by the Blush Bunny merch store and grab you some official Blush Bunny merch. Hoodies, pullovers, t-shirts, mugs, you name it. But yeah, people were like, why is there modern music? Why are there black people? First of all, if I'm not mistaken, it's not based on a true story. Just because it's set in a different century doesn't mean it cannot be fantasy. I mean, come on. I personally thought adding the modern day songs was cute. Took me a second to catch it though. I'm sitting there like, why does this sound so familiar? <laughs> like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Next. Hey, wait a minute. It was cute. Added a little razzle dazzle. And as far as the black people are concerned, do we really want to talk about what black people were doing in 1813? I mean, really? This would be a whole different show if that was the case. But it probably would have won the Emmy for Best TV Drama because we know how much the Academy loves black period pieces. And of course, within this whole conversation of black people being on the show, the sweet little subdivision of colorism came up. Yes, we absolutely need darker skinned people in lead roles. However, comma, this is Netflix we're talking about a Shondaland production. The anchor 
of interracial flings and things. Speaking of Anchor, make sure you guys are following the Blush Bunny podcast available on Spotify, Apple, Anchor, Stitcher, and Google Podcasts. Link below more episodes coming soon but yeah what did you expect now if they had more dark skin leads people really would have been pissed probably would have boycotted the show i personally think they should have had even more diversity really shake the table who do i contact to make this happen let me write lady whistle down real quick bridgerton if you've seen the show were you a part of the fanfare did you genuinely like it or were you just watching it because everybody else was What's your overall thoughts? Let me know down below. You know, one thing I was waiting to happen, but it didn't. I just knew Julie Andrews was going to pop up on the screen. I was so disappointed that she did it. Like, ugh. But we have our first Blush Bunny sighting. Thanks so much for your support. I really appreciate it. Blush Bunny merch is linked below. If you'd like to be featured in a video with your merch, send it on over. As I've mentioned, podcast links are down below. Right now, there's the first Twilight movie as well as the My Policeman audiobook, which was requested a few times by one of the blush bunnies to be uploaded as a podcast so i'm happy that you're enjoying that i'll keep you guys updated on the progress of the podcast in the community tab also on my instagram story hey follow me on instagram <laughs> i finally know how i want to do the page it's gonna be a fun interactive experience there for all of us movie and tv lovers as well as like my personal stuff thinking about doing a mini Q&A over there also. I say mini because I'm definitely going to do one for the channel later. I won't dare to do it now because I owe you guys so much content. How disrespectful would that be? Hey, the next video is a Q&A. Girl, that is not what we asked you. <laughs> but follow me at the blush bunny underscore on Instagram. If you're on Twitter, follow me at the blush bunny tweet me for a follow back so that I know that you're not a bot um what else oh if you want to see a video on Bridgerton season 2 let me know and if you would like an extended version of this audio on the podcast where I talk more about the nature of the Dukes and Daphne's disturbing relationship I'll do that I want to keep this video on the light side you know censorships and and the monetizations are, are heavy. <laughs> so if you haven't done so already, be sure to click like and hop on over to that subscribe button and hit the bell. Otherwise, YouTube will never show you my videos. As always, I'm all ears. Until next time, bye.